What's going on, A to Z Sports? We, uh, I am live, Sam Phelan here from the Dr. Doom Room at St. Thomas Sports Park, the uh, practice facility of the Tennessee Titans for an edition of Titans at Two, powered and presented by Dobird Pizza and Rotisserie, when you're sh- where you are sure to find flavor. Uh, Dobird located out in the Green Hills area. If you watch Monday's edition of Titans at Two, you saw me there at Dobird. I'll be there uh, all throughout the 2023 Titans season to give you guys updates on what's going on here at St. Thomas Sports Park, what's happening at Titans practice and in these press conferences powered by Dobird. I love Dobird, so thank you to them for sponsoring today's edition. It's Titans at 2, live from St. Thomas Sports Park as we get to get ready to preview Titans at Browns. Week 3 with the Titans going up to Cleveland. Uh, a big test. Deshaun Watson and company without Nick Chubb. We're going to talk about that without Nick Chubb this weekend, uh, but a very, very... Uh, I would say intimidating Browns defense, a very fast, very aggressive defensive front that could pose problems for Ryan Tannehill and the Titans offensive line. So we're going to talk to Tim Kelly. We're going to show you some stuff from defensive coordinator Shane Bowen and some of the Titans assistant coaches as well as we get ready to break everything down. But I want to start this edition of Titans at two with that man down at the bottom of your screen on my graphic. I want to talk about Dylan Radins, the Titans left guard who is expected to start at left guard for the Titans in Cleveland. Xavier Newman filled in for Peter Skaronsky to begin the, to begin the game against the chargers two series and two ugly series from uh, Xavier Newman. And he was removed from the game as I can roll some of this tape from Sunday. As you see, Newman just getting beat, unblocking, or two guys going completely unblocked there. And then right here, him and Andre Dillard chasing the same guy, allowing Joey Bosa to get through that line untouched as well and take down Ryan Tannehill. Now, sacks were a big part of the offensive struggles for the Titans last week. They scored 27 points. Don't get me wrong. The Titans found points, uh, but... Early on, things were not going on for them. They had 11 net yards uh, on the first, or uh, eight net yards, rather, in the first quarter of the game, and the Chargers at that point already had 11 points on the board. So Dylan Radins is expected to fill in at left guard this week. A very impressive return for him, all things considered, eight and a half months removed from ACL surgery. But what is Radins long-term for the Titans? I think this is a really interesting question. Because I think Dylan Radins has an opportunity over the next few weeks with Peter Skaronsky out to potentially give the Titans a very, very difficult decision to make. So uh, I had a chance to catch up with Jason uh, Hotailing, the Titans offensive line coach. Big Hoss talked to me about Radins' performance on Sunday and where they see him moving forward. Here is Jason Hotailing. I want to talk to you about uh, Dylan. Uh, obviously, very exciting return for him, eight and a half months post-op. Uh, just your thoughts on his performance against the Chargers and your grade of him over at left guard. Yeah, Dill, um, Dylan came out and just really proud of, uh, of what he was able to accomplish there, um, getting himself back, you know, and we already talked about that. You know, as far as game day goes, you know, I, I think it's just like every lineman. Whenever they play a game, there's some good, there's some bad, right? But at the end of the day, man, he was out there, he worked his butt off. He did some really good things. The fact that he was able to go in there and uh, and function the way he did um, is a uh, it's a compliment to him and, and to everybody here who got him ready. And I mean, just a, a pretty uh, cool thing to see him go out there and compete the way he did. Is there a long term plan for him yet? I know with Peter down, it's easy to just be like, all right, well, there's a spot open at guard, but. After Peter were to return, is Dylan still inside, outside? Where do you see him? Yeah, Dylan. Right now, right now we're just uh, focused on the Browns going up there and giving us the best uh, opportunity up front to, to do what we got to do to help the team. Um, as far as the versatility and stuff goes, we talk about that with all of our linemen. So, right now, just focus on on uh, the uh, challenge we have here this week, and then we'll move forward after that. Good problem to have, I guess, having a couple guys that you feel good can play a couple different spots for you. Yeah, versatility has always been a, a, a key component uh, here. and uh, It's fun to see a guy who can work in uh, a bunch of different positions and has uh, a skill set to be able to accomplish the fundamentals at, at a variety of spots. 
That is Tennessee Titans offensive line coach Jason Hotailing. I had a chance to catch up with him just about a half hour ago. Talk to him about Dylan Radens and where he sees them. And what you heard from Haas is really the message that has been reverberating throughout the Titans building here, including when I asked head coach Mike Vrabel earlier this week, where do you see Dylan Radens long term? Titans not really giving an answer to that right now. I think it's a really interesting question, though, because right now it's easy. You can point Dylan Raidens as your left guard in the future. I don't think Peter Skaronsky will play even two weeks from now against Cincinnati. I would say week five against Indianapolis is when we might be looking at a Peter Skaronsky t- uh, return. So you maybe have three games, three full games of Dylan Raidens at left guard to get a chance and see what he looks like. If he looks like he did against the Chargers, which in the words of Mike Vrabel was fairly well, played fairly well, uh, you have a very interesting choice moving forward. He's a third round pick that you want to get an opportunity to see what he can do as a full time starter. You want him to be impactful for you, but you're obviously not benching Peter Skaronsky. He's going to come back and be your left guard. You then have a left tackle and Andre Dillard, who has also also shown some weaknesses at times, but you paid Andre Dillard a decent bit of money and gave him a three year deal. Now, there's not many guarantees in that contract, so the Titans do have outs, but you're not going to pay Andre Dillard nine million dollars this season to be a backup left tackle. That doesn't feel like a good investment. And then you have Chris Hubbard who I would have easily written off as the odd man out once somebody returns. But Nicholas Petit-Ferrer coming back after week six, he's probably the starting right tackle at that point. And Chris Hubbard could be out of a job, but he has played really well up to this point. It's going to be a very interesting decision uh, for the Titans as their offensive line gets healthier and as they try and reshuffle this deck to make sure that they're protecting the quarterback. This stat from Paul Kaharski, I think sums it up really well. This is about this uh, last game against the Chargers and story of the game on offense is the sacks allowed drives that they allowed a sack 26 plays 27 net yards zero points drives they didn't allow a sack 333 net yards and 39 plays all of the sacks they gave up five of them came on either third down or fourth down and absolutely killed drives. So What is the key against the Cleveland Browns on offense? Preventing sacks, staying ahead in the down and distance. And offensive coordinator Tim Kelly said as much today, speaking to the media, that the Titans cannot get behind the sticks. For you as a play caller of the offense, and I mean, there's been so many changes uh, on that side of the ball this year. Yeah, I think uh, the guys did a good job of, of, you know, doing, going on and executing one of our top team keys last week, which was being efficient on first and second down. Uh, you didn't have it, you know, we had, um, I think it was the second drive. We, you know, we jump off sides, uh, you know, we have an ME on, on the second and 10. Like it's just, it, it's hard to get into any type of rhythm. I don't care how long, how, how many, how many games guys are playing with one another. Um, if you're consistently putting yourself behind the sticks like that. So I thought our guys did a great job of coming out in, in maintaining their focus, their, their high level of detail and we're able to sustain drives. You got the big spark. Offensive coordinator Tim Kelly there. Yeah, the key to this game is going to be making sure the Titans can get into drives. So those sacks have hurt them. Pre-snap penalties have also hurt them. Uh, Shooting themselves in the foot, getting behind the sticks, getting behind in the down and distance, really putting themselves into uh, a box offensively and limiting what they're able to do. When the Titans are in second and manageable, third and manageable, it really opens up their playbook specifically with their two running backs, because Tajay Spears and Derrick Henry are a phenomenal duo that complement each other very well. Running back coach Justin Outen referred to them as yin and yang uh, about an hour ago when I was speaking with him uh, outside of St. Thomas Sports Park. And I really think uh, that's a great summary of what these two are. Henry is obviously a bruiser who you can get the ball, uh, give the ball to between the tackles. He can run over somebody. He can get you short yardage. If you give him a head of steam, he's going to make a big play and he's nearly impossible to tackle. But when you're running outside zone, when you're throwing a screen pass, when you're trying to just get the ball to a player in space and see what they can create, Tajay Spears is a really good option and he is, is not easy to tackle in his own right. He continues to run through contact and really impress the Titans coaching staff. So if you're asking yourself why Derrick Henry's usage has been down, maybe you're a fantasy football owner wanting to know why Derrick Henry's not getting the same amount of carries he has in years past. I don't think that's changing anytime soon. They want to get the ball in the hands of both Henry 
and Spears. And Tim Kelly also said, there's no pitch count. There's no plan. They are playing this by ear and seeing how the game develops. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know if we necessarily have a, a pitch count. I don't know if we necessarily like it's so much of it's going to be dictated on, on how the game goes. And, and, um, whether you want to call that who's got the hot hand, who's the better matchup, and what, what, however, however we want to say that. Um, We've got two very talented backs with two unique skill sets, um, and it's a it's a good problem to have for us to be able to to, to make sure that we're we're getting both those guys enough touches. So those are my two keys right there. You hear Tim Kelly mention both of them, right? Don't allow sacks. Don't allow stupid penalties. So staying ahead in the down and distance. And when you do that, make sure you have good balance between your running backs. You can do these things, prevent this from happening and be more on that bottom section of that tweet from Paul Kaharski. The Titans are going to score points and probably, and I think, beat the Cleveland Browns. Now, the Browns defense is uh, very intimidating. And as some of you point out here, uh, I believe it was Max says, Schwartz knows our defense really well. This ought to be fun. Yeah, Jim Schwartz, the Cleveland Browns defensive coordinator, was here in Tennessee as an assistant for two years. He knows this personnel, but things are always changing in this league. The Titans defense this year has different personnel and players. I mean, Arden Key, Aziz Alshire, Sean Murphy Bunting, there's different pieces on this defense than the one that Jim Schwartz, Jim Schwartz uh, had a hand in. So while, uh, yeah, Shane Bowen learned some things from Schwartz, I, I don't necessarily think that that will be a huge factor uh, in the game. But let's talk about the Titans defense and Shane Bowen's group. Uh, I, I'm going to talk about a big key that I'm really surprised has not been talked about more and I think the Titans are actually uh, underplaying a little bit so I'm going to tell you guys what that is but I want to talk about who's powering today's show and it is Dobird Pizza and Rotisserie. Dobird brings you a crave-worthy menu with an unexpected yet perfect duo of pizza and rotisserie chicken with offbeat flavor combos made even more delicious when you dunk your food in any of their homemade sauces. Dobird always delivers on flavor and satisfaction Oh, and they have a happy hour that goes three to six Monday through Friday. That's a happy three hours. It's going on in 20 minutes is when that's getting started at Dobert. So get over there. I was just there on Monday for my live show, and I continue to be very, very impressed with the, the service, the ambiance. Everything at Dobird is top tier. So go visit them out in Green Hills for the perfect dinner or date night experience. That is Dobird in Green Hills powering today's show. Let's talk defense. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. It is uh, the Cleveland Browns and the Cleveland Browns running back, Nick Chubb, uh, who is now out. Nick Chubb is down with his knee injury, probably gone for the season. I see some comments here saying, let's see, are we good on sound? I've got people saying sound might be uh, problematic. I, some people are saying it's fine. MB's fine. Titan Fox is fine. I'm going to keep rolling. You guys let me know if I need to stop here. Uh, but I'm talking Nick Chubb going down. Let's talk Jerome Ford, who is in. Jerome Ford was very, very good last year uh, or last week on Monday Night Football as a running back, he came in, was able to circle up the Pittsburgh defense a few times, hit him for a few big plays. I thought this would be a bigger point of emphasis about how the Titans defense pivots from Chubb to Jerome Ford. But I was surprised to hear from both Shane Bowen and Aziz Alshire. This doesn't change much for them. Obviously there too. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're really good up front, right? They're really good up front. I think their old lines probably one of the better teams in the league in terms of blocking in the run game. Um, I don't think things changed too much. They had 30 rushes last week against the Steelers, and Chubb went out and played 26, right? So, I mean, I think that's who they are. That's their identity. Um, I don't know if they're truly going to get away from that just because Nick's not there. Obviously, you lose a great player. It's tough to replace, but bringing Hunt back, Ford did a good job when he was in there last week. What did that Shane Bowen, you hear him call Jerome Ford a good scheme fit. Aziz Alshire went a little bit further and said, I think he's just a good running back. And it had an awesome quote about, 
I don't care about a guy's name. If I see the back of his jersey, I'm in trouble. Here's his ease. Cool. Cool. Thank you. What did you uh, What did you see from Jerome Ford on Monday night, and what kind of a different challenge is that for you and, and your defense? Not having Nick Chubb there, but a different kind of back in Jerome. Yeah, obviously, you know Nick Chubb is Nick Chubb. You know, we say his name like that for a reason. So. Uh, now it's crazy to see what happened to him. I hate to see that. Um, but I honestly think Jerome Ford is a good running back. You know, even but prior to him getting in the game and, and playing how he was, like last week, you know, Chubb was playing. I think he had like 15 carries in that first game that they had. But I think he runs hard. I think he runs fast. Like he's, he's kind of like a flasher, but um, at the same time, he's physical. So I think he's just as good. Obviously, he's not Nick Chubb, but he's, he's his own back, and I like him a lot, honestly. Fair to say that when a team has that good of like a rushing attack, it's usually the, the sum of its parts than just one guy or one yeah, back. Yeah, for sure. Even when I was in San Francisco, like we had so many dudes. Raheem Moser was there. Jeff Wilson was there. You know, we had so many guys that were you would have never even knew their name until they got their opportunity, and then they burst on the scene. And you know, now they're some of the top backs, you know, around the league. So I, you know, I'm not big on like, oh, I don't know this guy's name. I don't even care what your name is, honestly. I, I don't. If I'm looking at the back of your jersey, I'm probably getting beat. So I'm more so focused on like, you know, just playing the guy who's in front of me, and, you know, respecting all my opponents and trying to just win. So. As you so there is Aziz Alshire. You see he's given his respect to Jerome Ford. The Titans preparing a lot of the same ways because they believe the Browns offense is built to run the ball. It's very similar to the 2021 Titans who lost Derrick Henry. And there was a lot of freak out, a lot of you know people wondering, what are they going to do without Derrick Henry on offense? The answer was give the ball to Deontay Foreman and watch him go because they were built so well up front and they schemed up runs so well that they were able to find success with a different back in there. Not quite the same impact as Derrick Henry, uh, but still productive nonetheless. I think that's what we're going to see from the Browns. Like Nick Chubb is Nick Chubb for a reason, uh, as Aziz said. But Jerome Ford is no slouch. He proved that on Monday Night Football. And he's going to come in. The bigger question, do the Browns go away from the run? Because this is something we saw the Chargers do in week two against the Titans, the week one Los Angeles Chargers ran the ball 40 times with Austin Eckler, with Joshua Kelly, and with Justin Herbert. Like they they wanted to go ground attack first. They then lost Austin Eckler to an ankle injury and went against a very good Titans run defense, very quickly pivoted and had 21 carries as a team, about half of their week one total in week two, and let Justin Herbert throw it a bunch. So I'm interested in seeing where the Browns go. They have a talented quarterback in Deshaun Watson, even if he hasn't been playing at his best right now. Does their offensive strategy pivot at all, knowing that run defense is Tennessee's strength, that Nick Chubb's not there to save them, and that Jerome Ford might not have the same amount of juice in his legs? Uh, I think it's in the Titans' best interest if the Browns continue to Brown and try to go back to the running game, if they go back to the well, I think they're going to learn pretty quickly that Tier Tart, Jeffrey Simmons, they don't play that. They're, they don't, uh, they don't let opposing offenses just run all over them and establish the run. So we'll see what the strategy is. That's something to watch. So if you're looking offensive keys, again, prevent sacks, stay ahead of the sticks, second and manageable, third and manageable, and then let Tajay and Derek yin and yang their way down the field for big explosive plays. Defensively, continue to stop the run, and in my opinion, dare Deshaun Watson to beat you. Terrell Williams, Titans defensive line coach, said just an hour ago, yeah, I don't care what the numbers say. Deshaun's still playing at an elite level. That's what the tape says, according to Coach T. I don't see it quite as much. I would say... Make Deshaun Watson beat you. Don't get beat by the ground game because you know that's what Cleveland wants to do. If you can make them uncomfortable, you stand a better chance of winning this game. That's all for me for Titans at 2. I want to remind everybody that we are uh, in this 2 o'clock hour-ish uh, every Monday and Thursday. We weren't quite right at 2 today because 
uh, Titans assistant coaches were available right around two o'clock. So we had to push it back about a half hour, but Mondays, Thursdays, I'm live Titans at two with Sam Phelan here on A to Z sports talking about press conference reactions. We're going to react to this game against the Cleveland Browns on Monday afternoon, and then move on to the next one, one week at a time. So make sure you guys make an appointment viewing here. Uh, let's check it out uh, and make sure you guys are with me on Monday. So appreciate it as always. We will see you guys on Monday. Peace.